the, the, the exit is just not very impactful. Like a drop the mic. It's a slowly approach the camera moment. Spencer. Hello and welcome back to the Croak and Crow podcast. I am Spencer Cardia. I am Karma. 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 Okay, a dish best served cold. Yeah, I like that song. Um, karma. No, karma. like it's like it's like her name is Karma. You treat. Oh her no, her, you're not allowed. Her, to, that, her ice that, is cold. You're not allowed to listen to that song anymore. Her ice is cold. Her heart is cold. That song got canceled this Did year. It? No, it didn't. Recently. Why? Why? Um, because the Jeffrey Dahmer documentary came out. Okay. And it reminds. Oh, eat her heart. She'll eat your heart like Jeffrey Dahmer. Yeah, and so people, as they always do, then. Can't let let sleeping dogs lie. Okay. And they're like, wait a second. Well, why are we glorifying this guy? Don't be him for Halloween. Well, we're not. He, he wanted it to rhyme with karma. And it kind of didn't. But with his accent, it worked. Yeah, Car- I, I know. But it, Karma I, Dahmer. But a lot of people were coming in like. Dama. Karma um, Dama. Remember Katy Perry had a song where they say, eat your heart out like Jeffrey Dahmer. There are real people that were affected Katie by Katy Perry. This. Yeah, it was her song. And, oh, and, what? Uh, Juicy J was. Oh, interesting. Juicy J was I just saw on. the TikTok. Yeah, it was, um, but I couldn't remember. It's a, uh, and you want to play with magic. Is that Black Horse or something? Dark Horse. Dark Horse. Dark Horse. Katy Perry, where's she been at? She's in trouble. <laughs> She's also in trouble. <sighs> she, she did something Republican, I think. Oh. She did something. And you people know, said, how dare you? Do you ever wonder like about like famous people that like, had a, a bit, not like one hit wonders, but like stints of fame? Yeah. And then you don't hear about them? Yeah. It's like, what are they doing day to day? I think she's married to Orlando Bloom. Oh, wow. Well, okay. Well, besides that, like what are they both doing every day? Oh, I don't know what anyone's doing or no. like she was, she was pretty famous. Uh, no, that's what I'm like. I, I'm saying. So she's like set. It's not one of these people that's like, where are they now? It's like working at a Kroger's. Right. It's, that's what I meant. Like she's living off money, obviously. Yeah. But no, she's out there. I don't know where, but... Do you think she's like still like doing stuff or like... Yeah, yeah. I think she still makes appearances. Yeah. I'm just imagine there's some people like like Eminem. Uh, we talked about him before. He's an is- mm-hmm. isolate. I think he just got inducted to the um, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Mm-hmm. But um, it's like day to day by themselves. Now, I know that they're normal people. Yeah. And so they're, they're doing normal things like, I don't know, scrolling Instagram. But like, it's weird to think about like just like... Them being by themselves and just like thinking. It is. It is. And not seeing them be their persona. And not seeing Katy Perry be Katy Perry. Yeah. Like, what, just what, be like Kathy. Yeah. <laughs> just, just mean Catherine. Catherine Bloom. Yeah, right. At one of her houses. I don't know. Mm. Something to think about. But how is everything? We didn't say hi to Frank. Oh, hey, Frank. He's wearing purple today. That's kind of Katy Perry-esque. Is it? No. You know what it's, it is? Old school Justin Bieber. Um, Do you remember that? When Justin Bieber first started, they wanted him to be the 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 poster child, um, heartthrob singer boy. Yeah. And so they gave they made him have like a classic cut. Okay. And I'm pretty sure like they made him like your color's purple now. Oh. So that the believers. How funny! I wonder if purple has something to do with it because. In the eight in the eighties, yeah, in the eighties, Donny Osmond was was um he was it was a brother sister duo. They were Mormons. They were super wholesome, but they were also top of the charts. Yeah, and he always had on purple socks. And I remember because we had the doll, oh. and even the Barbie doll had purple socks. Oh yeah, so that was like Justin. Like that was like it was like almost Mark. You know like how uh, I don't know, brands. Yeah, the the whole purpose of like branding an item is right recognizable. So up until you know his like tattoo phase and stuff. Like that flowy hair, it was like you'd always see him in purple. Interesting. I think of, um, I think of Advent. No, sorry, Lent. Yeah, Lent has Lent. Was purple, yeah. purple candle, and all that, right? Um, or is uh, it Advent? What is no, going on? But Advent's pink candles, and then one white one. Yeah, you're right. Okay, purple is purple is Lent. Lent. Okay. Uh, I think of Barney, Barney, which actually, you know, they say Barney's purple, but when you really look at him, he's like almost pink, more pink. You know what I'm saying? Oh, like magenta? Yeah, it's like that rose purple. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder... Uh, okay, so put put him next to ma- actual magenta from Blue's Clues, and you, we can see if they match. Well, magenta is like pink pink. Uh, yeah, it's, it's sort of like a purple Also, pink. it depends sometimes, like, if you 
uh, different screens. Yeah. Screens, books. It always comes up a different color. Yeah. And you know, Simpsons, the show, um, they made the people yellow. Why did they do that? So when, but you know, this, that, the Simpsons was a long way back when, when. So far back. You would, you would flip through your six channels or however many. And it was yellow to distinguish it oh. from other cartoons and stuff. So it's like, even Very when yellow. you're going, pr, 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 like old school mm-hmm. channel flipping, it's like immediately Simpsons. Same, actually, the same way we're talking about Purple for Justin Bieber and this right. idea of branding. It was the idea that it will immediately catch your eye. You don't even need to like sit on it. You're like, right. oh, The Simpsons is on. Right. I think. Um, it's Friday, guys. A beautiful Friday. It's dark. It's dark outside. Uh, you know, it's, this time of year is crazy. You get you get the the daylight savings. Um Daylight givings, you give daylight giving it away. Um, <laughs> if people think I'm always doing this, there's a lot of cords under my feet. Yeah, I don't know how many people were. Maybe actually, there's probably some people that like you really just killed all their conspiracies of like. Or did I make it more intriguing because yeah. I'm trying to explain it away? Yeah, I'm not shackled to this table. <laughs> I'm not looking for a way out. Um, I'm blinking for help. Yeah, Horse so food. it's it's getting dark real early. How do you feel about that? Um, I are you like some people really care about like sunlight and stuff? Are you one of those people? I love sunlight, but I try not to be upset about things I can't control. Well, you mean, I'm not upset, but I mean like you know you can have a preference. Like some people, they're like ah, who cares? Who, uh, who prefers to be in the dark? Uh, dream vampires. I'm not a vampire. Um, well, you know, people live in Alaska. They get like a whole like six months. Doesn't of... mean they prefer it. It's they just live there. I think there's night owls. All right. Um, I don't prefer it, but I. Well, okay. Sorry. Yeah. No. One... I also know how it, I know how it works. I, no... know how the, I know how the planets work, so I know that we're we're heading for the shortest day of the year, and then we'll start to come off it real quick in January. Oh, a realist, always the best <laughs> conversationalists. Um. <laughs> Well, well, you're a depressist. You, w- you want me to be cold, upset about the cold, upset about the dark, upset about the, the I don't know what your your most recent complaint is. And then I'm, just, I'm just trying to stay positive, man. Misery loves company. And I'm not going to give it to you. You and Frank yeah, can eat it. No, I, I try to like bring it in circles. I'm not like, I don't start off being negative. Mm-hmm. I'm like, well, you know, some people like just get kind of depressed. Yeah, in some the dark. people. But and it's like, are you one of those people? <laughs> I am, like I said, there's lots of things I prefer and... And uh, I'll either get them. Actually, I'll always get them. But until I get them, I don't want to be upset about it. Okay. Yeah. Well, I don't like it. I don't like the yeah. dark. Um, I think in like an earlier podcast, I was talking about, man, summer's dragging on. Like, where's fall? It's November yeah, and 70? I warned you. And let me tell and you, I warned you, this morning I got up for school, not to go to it, but to teach it. And I went outside to start my car, and I said no. Because the, the window was iced over, right? Yeah. I, was yeah. Like, I asked for this. I know. Oh, my god. I know, but I told you. So, fair warning, you know. Mm-hmm. Fair warning. That's what they say in um, an auction. Oh. Is yeah. that where it comes from? Yeah. So, you have a gavel, and it's an auction, and people are bidding, and I'm saying how much for the purple jacket, and I'm getting $5, $10, $20, and it's not going higher than $20, so I say... Twenty dollars going once, nobody raises their card. Going twice. Not all of them. No, that's very like not everybody can do that. And and uh and and also sometimes we're talking about um very very Christie's auction house is very 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 high end. They're not doing that farmer hog call thing that you're talking about. I am sure fancy lady. There are some people who gone to school for auction talk yeah and you call it farmer hog talking <laughs> is going to get you roasted no. in the comments listen listen anyway so she's she, she's very fancy it could be like who wants this this um you know uh this gold neck this diamond necklace that was worn by the duchess of Cambridge. denmark and then and then uh, it's it's people are on the phone calling from all over the country and i'll give you the you know 200 million and then she says fair warning because once this falls don't tell me you had your card up don't tell me you had a phone bid don't tell me anything fair warning you can't tell me anything fair warning that's 
And Sold to the man in the hat. And I'm guessing, you know, at some point somebody must have said, I had my card up and I didn't know that the bidding was over. You had fair, fair warning. warning. Fair weather, fair warning, farewell, my friend. Fair maiden. Um, <laughs> should have done fair, dumb, dumb. We should have done fair for um, one word Wednesday. Tune in next week. We'll do it. Or will we? I don't know. Will we even be here next week? Spencer, what is wrong with you? Do it's you just, have sad? What? Do you have a sad? Do I have a sad? Do you have sad? What is that? Spencer, everybody knows it. Do you have sad? It's a buzz. It's a buzz um, disorder. I feel like this new like Valor Girl talk is just like... It's not new. This is super old. Seasonal effectiveness disorder. Oh. Is oh. sad. And it's because you're depressed about the cold weather and the dark sky. Uh, I don't know. I think I have... um. What's it called? Uh, that's it. I have ad. ad. I'm, I'm guessing you just made that up the way you were. I have annual effectiveness <laughs> disorder. It's just sort of all year round. Oh, no, you don't. You're pretty positive. I'm pretty positive. No, I'm ugly positive. Spencer. That's true. We have an ugly podcast. Look in our playlist. We have an ugly podcast? Mm-hmm. Every podcast of ours is an ugly podcast. That's true. But... We can't get too down because today's a very special day. On top of it being Friday, we do something else. Do you need, do you know what we do? Yes, that is right. It's Dr. Seuss Friday. Sound the alarms or don't. Or pound the alarms, as Nicki Minaj would say. I thought it's sound the alarms. It's pound. Pound the alarm. Yeah. Um, it is Dr. Seuss Friday. What do we do on Dr. Seuss Friday? Well, first of all, we cheer the F up. <laughs> up, up, up. Up, up, up. It's a great day for up. That was our book we read last week. Mm. It's not the book we're going to read this week because we read it already. On Dr. Seuss Friday, we read a Dr. Seuss book. Now, stop in your tracks. And before you think that that's childish and stupid and and dumb. They're going to turn the channel. Never going to amount to anything. For the Simpsons. And, and was, was a failure in school. And... And hurt their isn't, leg isn't tall enough and hurt their knee and where two they wear a hat and a hood at, and in the wear, house wear the same color green as their mother and <laughs> <laughs> before you do all that um there, no they, we we're not just reading a kids book no to be kids no we like Dr. Seuss a lot we think he was a very smart man who was very creative and and mindfully aware of what he was doing because inside of these books that have clever rhymes and and creative characters that we all know and love there are deep meanings that can really get through to children and adults but it does it in a positive way where you don't really know that you're being taught something right isn't that the the best thing yeah that's mr miyagi you know he was he was he's a literary mr miyagi wax on wax off why am i doing that block a punch block a punch block a punch you learn about about uh what's Horton Ears of Who. No, what's the other one? What's up? The Lorax. And you're like, oh, the Lorax is so fun. Years down the, li- the line, you're like, I want to advocate for the environment. Right. And so we go back and we go through these Dr. Seuss books and we try to get the meaning as adults. Now that our brains yeah. are, are partially, mostly developed. Right, mostly. Yeah. Um, combined, I think we have, <laughs> yeah. we have one one fully developed brain. Including Frank. <laughs> yeah, he's 75% of it. Um. And so yeah, so we, we we just we do that. We've we've done it for how many? Thirty two books now. I think more than that. We are we are we've gone. You, there's a whole playlist. We've we've done it all. But um, and then as always, as a Christian podcast, we we put a little Christian spin on it sometimes. But more than that, it's also a nice little healthy exercise for reading the Bible. Mm-hmm. This is a, a a fun way to exercise your brain of reading something. And then getting the real spirit or real meaning from it. In the Bible, you'll read a parable and there's a spiritual meaning behind yeah. it. So it's kind of like a, it's like a little brain brain uh, yeah. strengthener yeah. Um, for something like that, which is a little bit more intense. Yeah. Same way you do Sudoku before you do your SATs. So without further ado, we are reading a special book today. <clears throat> we are reading Would You Rather Be a Bullfrog? Someone that's special about this book. We've read a couple like these. This isn't by Dr. Seuss. Oh, change oh. the title. This is by Theo Lesieg. Wait, Theo Lesieg. Sounds familiar. Huh, what's what's Dr. Seuss's real name? Theodore uh, Geisel? Yeah. 
<laughs> What's Geisel spelled backwards? Lasig. Theo Lasig is another alias of Dr. Seuss that he would use when he did not do the illustrations. So we got Would You Rather Be a Bullfrog here, written by Dr. Seuss. Right. As Theo Lasig, because Ray Mickey, which I believe that we read another book that he illustrated, okay. um, did the illustrations for him. So nothing changes about the writings. It just means the book will look a little different than what you may be used to. So let's get into it. So yeah, would you rather be a bullfrog? Um, I don't think I would be. but I think that would be last on my list. Not last, but d- low on the list, let's we'll say. We'll be number one on the list before we get in the book. A horse. Really? I want to be one of those horses that runs on the beach. and No, it, but here's the thing. Uh, Same way as a human, you can't... A horse can't say, I'd rather be a human because I want to be Orlando Bloom, rich uh, and married to Katy Perry. It's, okay. You are gambling on what human you're going to be. Okay. I'll be a zebra then. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Why are you judging all of my choices? Horse is better. No, but zebras don't get... Don't get like because you said I might end up in a terrible farmer's stall. And I'm in terrible farmers. I was just saying like <sighs> almost like most horses have to work. Like horses are working animal. Right. So zebra does what he wants. Nobody stops the zebra. Uh, yeah, they the, do. It's the, called a lion and a cheetah <laughs> and bears. Oh my, not bears. bears. Big cats. Hyena, hyenas. I've seen a lot of videos of and in like and they're and they're a lot bigger than these animals. <laughs> and so they're just like on their butts. All right, I'll be a giraffe. That's a good one. Mm-hmm. That's a good one. Uh, but the fighting with the giraffes, like I feel like I would like hurt my neck. Like well, that's because you have a human neck. Who would I be? Um, great question. You know, a lot of people think like, oh, a dog. But I always tell them what I just told you. It's like, what if you come there's back a lot of, right, right, right. of bad, bad situation dogs. So I think I would be a... I want to be a bald eagle. I was just thinking maybe I'll be a bird instead. Yeah. I want to be a bald eagle. It's an apex predator. But um, there's a couple of reasons I picked it. Okay. Thank you for asking. <laughs> um, so first of all, it's an apex predator. So okay. nothing's killing the bald eagle. Okay. You know, and one, just the freedom of soaring higher than any other bird. No. Also, but then the problem with apex predators is you're like, what a lonely, secluded life. Right. Bald eagles, you see like that mating ritual they do where they... Yeah. And then they, they're... Uh, I believe, I could be wrong about this, but I believe they mate for life. Okay. So it's like they're also kind of social. Like mm-hmm. you, you'd be able to live uh, as an apex predator, right? But you know, you're not like you're. Like, you go fishing and stuff, right? You're not having to kill gazelles, right? And then you also have your your wifey bald eagle, and you hang out forever, have bald eagle kids, you know, have bald eagle grandchildren. You scream, you scream. The the Americans like, love protect you. you. They protect you. They mm-hmm. love you. You're like a national symbol. Mm-hmm. But you be your horse or whatever. Um, I think I ended up as a giraffe. I think you're going to be a bullfrog by the end of this book. Maybe. Maybe it'll change my mind. All right. All right. Not digging the right, the illustration. Sorry. Okay. Uh, Ray McKay. It's a little childish. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, one thing we Sets like scene, yeah. about Dr. Seuss is it's a children's book, but it's, right. you can enjoy looking at it. Right. Sorry, Ray, if you're watching this. Tell me, would you rather be a dog or be a cat? It's time for you to think about important things like that. We just were. Would you rather be a bullfrog or a, be a butterfly? Which one would you rather be? Come on now. Tell me why. Tell me, would you rather be a minnow or a whale? And tell me, would you rather be a hammer or a nail? Would you rather have a feather or a bushy tail behind? Which would feel the best on you? Come on, make up your mind. And would you rather be a cactus or a toadstool or a rose? And which would you, would you look best on you? The long or shortish nose? Would you rather be a skinny or would you rather be a fat? Would you rather be a ball or would you rather be a bat? And once more, I'm going to ask you, how about that dog and cat? Think think now. Would you rather be a rooster or a hen? How would you like to lay an egg every now and then? Would you rather have big moose horns or small horns like a cow? This is so, so, so important and I want to know right now. Would you rather be a bluegill bird and fly around and sing? Or would you rather be a bumblebee and fly around and sting? And tell me, would you rather be a table or a chair? And now tell me, would you rather have green or purple hair? Would you rather be a clarinet, a trombone, or a drum? How would you like to have someone going boom boom on your tongue? Suppose you had to be a letter, well then which one would you be? Would you rather be a curly one like J, S, or G? Or would you rather be a sharpie like K or Z or V? Now tell me, would you rather be a window or a door? 
And would you have more fun if you had six feet or 164? There are real important questions. Come on, tell me, tell me, please. Would you rather be a soda or a piece of smelly cheese? Would you rather live in igloos or would you rather live in tents? And would you rather be a dollar bill or 97 cents? And would you rather be a mermaid with a tail instead of feet? Or would you rather be a spook and run around dressed in a sheet? Or would, would you rather be a jellyfish, a sawfish, or sardine? And would you rather be this thing or that, the thing that's in between? Or the thing that's in between? It's hard to make your mind up about important things like that. I can't even make up my mind about that dog and cat. The end. The end. Lots to think about. If you were reading it to somebody and you want to interact, that that would be a great book because each every single one, yeah, they could like answer, answer, answer. Yeah. Uh, so the pay the one page that stood out to me is the one that said, "Would you rather be a skinny or a fat?" And I I was like, because you know yeah. that word is so charged. But then I thought, interesting because in that instance it's not charged it's like yeah it's not it's and and i think it might have been a, like a big animal or something that was cool and I'll, i mean even just the way it was written right would you rather be skinny or fat but why a skinny or a fat yeah it, it was like it kind of like uh yeah i feel like part of the chargedness of, of skinny and fat is like it's you are you know like leaving a lot of insults now like why you can't say homeless is because you are turning the person into a like rather than a person a a person who suffers with homelessness right um you're saying that you're a homeless person a fat is like would you rather be a fat that sounds weird but it's like it's saying that yeah yeah and also like because it's such a hated word but but in this instance and again we have to remember how how long ago it was written that that's progressive because um to give it as a choice yeah you know, it's not like, well, nobody would ever pick that. Yeah. You know, it's like, yeah. On the same page is, would you rather be a ball? Or a bat. Or a bat. But the way you read it so quickly, you said, would you rather be a baller? <laughs> bat. And I'm like, I looked, I said, it says baller in there? I'd rather but, be a baller. <laughs> that was funny. But I liked it a lot. It was, um, it was very poetic and, and, um, yeah, I'm, easy to hear. I'm, I'm... <laughs> And you're a good reader. It was. Um, no, I mean there there is something to it, and I haven't exactly put my finger on it, but maybe talking through it, I will. Um, it's asking these these pretty. No, I I don't even want to say like it's arbitrary in the sense of like everyone would take something to think about. Like, yeah, would you rather be a table or a chair? It's like right. Uh, uh, and then you see a lot of the emphasis of like. I need to know right now. Yeah. Quick answer. Answer. What would you rather be? Well, it pushes and, you not to be indecisive. You know, just say it. Pick something. No. You're oh. wrong. You didn't even read the same book that I did. I didn't read it at all. I, I see, just yeah. had it read to me. <laughs> the last page, as always, in Dr. Oh. Seuss books. All right. It's pretty like, um, so obviously, yeah. So during the book, like he says, these are real important questions. Come on. Tell me. Tell me, please. And then the very end, it's like, and he's like, wow, what about the dog and cat again? Like. Very last page. It's hard to make your mind up about important things like that. I can't even make up make my mind up about that dog and cat. And so it goes through a quick succession of all of these thinking things. Kind of, kind of like what animal would you be? Mm-hmm. And um, like and then that, like, you feel rushed. And it's like a table or a chair. And it's like next thing I'm saying, would you rather be big or small? A taller bit and. You feel rushed the entire time. And then the end, it kind of like, these are hard questions. I didn't even make up my mind about it. Oh, I, right. I, that was the, the first question was dog or cat. Right. And the, the author who is asking didn't even make their mind up about the first question. Right. The person who, who was berating you. And I kind of like that in the sense of you see it in life where you are constantly asked about, like, you, ha- you have to like, you kind of feel pressure about decisions in life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When you're going through this this game of life and like when others are like, well, what, what are you going to do? Like, or like, you, or you, there, you kind of feel like you need to know what you are doing in life. Mm-hmm. Like, or, or what your next step is. And it's like, well, what is it? What is it? What is it? Like, and you might feel rushed and stuff. And then at the end, it's like, wait a second. Like, these are hard questions that don't really need to be answered. Right. And the person that's asking them 
might not even know. And I don't exactly know what there is to say about that, but I feel like there is definitely a a sense of like I, it. It kind of just goes to that feeling of I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, and then like always, it's sort of like his endings is, and that's okay. Like these yeah. are these are hard questions, right? And you don't need to know, right? You don't need to know if you would rather be a ball or a bat. And sometimes you'll you'll feel like I need to. I'm 26 and and, and I don't have it all figured out. And you, yeah. you look around and, and, and that's sort of like what the last page kind of strikes me as you look around and you think everyone else has it figured out, mm-hmm. but well, they're doing this, they're doing this. And it's like, they're the ones asking me, like, even if they're not asking you the questions, it's like, you feel like you're being asked. Right. So they just bought a house. I didn't buy a house. And it's kind of like opens up the, the, the secret of the, where it's like, they don't know either. Yeah. And the, you know, the, the asker is in no position to turn you into a chair. Yeah. You know? I like it because the book last week up, I talked about Dr. Seuss giving children, bypassing their parents and talking straight to new humans to say, um, it's okay if you're not doing what everyone else is doing. Yeah. Uh, maybe you're going to decide to, to stay in bed today, which was the last page, of, yeah. I think, of that book. This book, I like it because um, it's timeless. So it was written at a time. Where it wasn't really asked, but it, it you know, it's still um, very applicable today, which is, you know, consider, th- consider what you want, what you yeah. like, you know, if you're brought up in a family or a school or a whatever, a Boy Scout troop, and they're telling you this is, this is the way, this is the thing, this is the preference, yeah. you know, uh, you know, if you are a Boy Scout, like, do you prefer the the forest or the beach? Yeah. Like, you're always in the forest and that's, you know, your troops and stuff, uh, exercises and stuff. But what do you prefer? And the same way we just talked about reading Dr. Seuss books to practice our minds, to trust ourselves, to interpret other things. I find that this little gem strengthens you to always ask yourself what do i prefer what do i think yeah and and because and and also i I, for some reason maybe you'll know it was interesting to me that he did not stay on living animals how he went to to stationary objects oh yeah um that was kind of like unexpected to me yeah well i because i that's what i think like it went to more of thinkers like the table and chair for me was like right it's a question that like the same way we answered the animal one that was like what we first asked like I'm sure you can you can think about it and uh, and come up with a with a yeah. a reason for either but um yeah no I I think I like it all around cuz yeah definitely there's also that personal expression right the like the entire book is is about personal expression yeah. it's it's like we started to, by talking about the skinnier fat mm-hmm. but it's also nice cuz you know we always talk about it in Dr. Seuss time this was like the 60s where right. everything was uniform but to give a kid an option of like, basically, that's what I like about it. It's like it starts with so many things of basically saying you can be whatever you want. Right. Which, which you want to be in this and this, this. It's like to think about it. And it's because with that, like I, I even know for myself, it was like I've all, like, I always like hated um open-ended questions. Yeah. Because it's like you can write whatever you want. Right. But I like the math and stuff where it's right. like. Uh, I, I start thinking about too much and I get overwhelmed. I would rather there be one answer and mm-hmm. I'll get that one answer right. But, um, you know, open-ended things are nice, but it's stressful where it's like you can be anything you want. Mm-hmm. So you can be this, you can be this, but you got to tell me, what, 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 what do you want to be? What do you want to be? And so you both have that that fueling of, of a child's mind or any hu- any yeah. human's mind that yeah. we're reading as adults where it's like you can be whatever you want. Right. But then it's like asking, asking, and there is that natural stress of, the more possibilities there are, the right. more uh, you're being berated. Right. And that's what the end is, is like, but these are also hard questions. Right. Nobody really says, like, you can be whatever you want um, when you grow up. And it's like, but that's also a hard decision to make. Like, mm-hmm. like nobody ends it with that. Right. Like, nobody ends it. But it's not going to be easy to find that one thing. But you, you got to, like, work to it. Like, so I, I kind of like that that sort of contrast of two ideas where it's like, you can express yourself however you want. Um, but right. that doesn't mean you're going to know right now. doesn't mean if I yeah. ask you. Well, I also don't need it to be 
my life's path yeah. like, or my, you know, like it can definitely be used in that way. But I also feel, because would you rather be, like I said, this, this, the, the, the speaker can't grant you, yeah. he can't turn you into a bullfrog or a feather on a tail or, and so when it's, would you rather be, would you rather be, you know, also it could be, it could be a used for a thought that's never going to materialize. Like I would rather be a ballerina, but I'm never going to be a ballerina, yeah. but I can think that. You know, I would rather be a bald eagle. I'll never be a bald eagle. <laughs> right. So it's just giving yourself liberty to think things instead of just like, especially if you're just trying to think, get yourself as you're get, think about your identity. And it's like, OK, I am a Protestant. I am white. Yeah. I am a boy. I am a Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. I am a Pennsylvania. I am Pennsylvania. I am Pennsylvania. <laughs> would you rather be? A Canadian. Yeah. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> um, I, I think I just want to like, I think I thought of like one easy way to sum this book up uh, and on that. But um, really, this entire book is about thinking for yourself. Is it not? Yeah. The book is about thinking for yourself. With no, with no um, punishment or anything. No. Well, that that's sort of the thing. It's thinking for yourself. Really kind of like it almost felt like an antagonist at least to me. Mm. The constant like in the corner. Yeah. Tell me tell me now and it's right. like it's like, so in the end it switches and it's like these are hard questions. I don't even know what I'm doing. Right. So it's like it's in, in a in a very sly way. It's like think for yourself but don't worry about other people. Like don't worry about what other people are are thinking of what you're doing. Right. They might they don't even know what they're doing. Right. It's like it's just like a very simplified version of Think for yourself. Other people think for themselves, right? Like they don't yeah. even, they don't know. Nobody has the answers. No. So think for yourself. Yeah, it's like a restaurant when they say, what, yeah. are, you, what are you going to order? Well, I'd rather be a bullfrog. Nice. This is all full circle. This will be our last episode. This is why we're called Croak and Crow. It's because we knew we were going to come to this book. Yeah. You'd, I'd rather be a croak and you'd rather be a crow. Amen to that. You're all crow. right, guys. Have a beautiful, blessed weekend. Um, what would you rather be? Goodbye. The, the the exit is just not very impactful. Like a drop the mic. It's a slowly approach the camera moment. Spencer.